Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be talking about low light laser therapy, LLLT, and helping to reduce thyroid autoimmune inflammation. This is a powerful topic to me, near and dear to my heart. I have Hashimoto's myself. I deal with patients all over the world that have Hashimoto's and thyroid inflammation. The root cause of thyroid inflammation in most people is an autoimmune attack. So your immune system is making TPO or thyroglobulin antibodies that are attacking the thyroid tissue. There are lots of different causes of um, Hashimoto's, anywhere from leaky gut, gut permeability, to gluten, to infections, to different you know, low nutrients, CoQ10, magnesium, selenium. So a lot of root causes. So fixing or adding in a laser is not gonna be the root, but it can be very palliative to support inflammation reduction. So in the laser world, you have LEDs, which are light emanating, or light emitting diodes, and then you have lasers. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission radiation. So it's gonna be a lot more coherent in sync and a lot more intensified in focus. Here's a very cool laser that I've been using the last few weeks. Um, it's the LZ30 laser by Avant, very powerful, you know, about eight to $10,000 for this device, not cheap. But what you're getting on this device, you're getting about a, you know, the red lights in the mid 630, 637 nanometer, about a thousand milliwatts. And then there's an infrared setting in the low 800s, 808 nanometers at about 1400 milliwatts. Now, the two biggest frequencies, guess what, that show reduction in thyroid inflammation are at those frequencies, at that red light, mid 630s, and at that low 800 nanometer for the infrared. So very powerful out of the gates. A lot of studies showing benefits um, at those frequencies. I'll pull a couple up out of the gate so you guys can see, just to make sense of it all. So this one study here, they're looking at 350 patients. And what they saw was encouraging. They saw a decrease in TPO. They saw an increase to T3 to T4 ratio. That means better T4 to T3 conversion. And they saw they were able to lower their thyroxin dosage. Now, when you look at a lot of lasers, they're, they're going to be contraindicated with the thyroid. The biggest reason why is because people have to adjust their thyroid dosage. So if their thyroid gets better, they may be taking too much and they may put themselves in a hyper state. So a lot of people say it's contraindicated. So you got to be careful, right? I'm not making this recommendation. I'm just letting you know what the data says. And then you have to make your own decision. I'm just talking about what I do myself personally. So here's how this laser works, for instance. I'll put this thing on like this. I'll give you a kind of the rundown. But because it has the two major frequencies that a lot of the data supports, it is a powerful intervention. Now, would you ever do this in replace of everything else? No. But if you want to support tissue healing, it can be another powerful way to, to get on that bandwagon. Another good one, safety of low-level laser therapy following autoimmune thyroiditis issues and then you can see here level thyroxine dose required significantly lowered. So the biggest reason why they're concerned is that you're taking too much thyroid because the thyroid gets better. The um, TPO and antibody levels did not differ in this group, but other studies show that it has improved. So that's good. You're not going to see the same every study. Plus, the problem is it's the milliwatts too. I mean, this is going to be a more powerful milliwatt type of uh, laser. You're going to get 1,000 milliwatts on the red light on the 636, and then you're going to get 1,400 on the infrared. Some will say oh, it's better to go lower, but I think this is why you're going to see a lot of difference in a lot of the studies. I've seen some where they're at like 50 milliwatts, right? You know, some brands will say, oh, well, it's better to go lower, but, you know, the, the, the studies, even on class four lasers, seem to be beneficial, and those go even higher, right? So really interesting there. Let me just keep on going here for you guys. Get a couple more up. This is another autoimmune thyroiditis. This is at an infrared frequency, right, 830. The, the one that I have here is that 8... 808, but you're still in that infrared wavelength, just so you know. Just like if you're in the 600s, you're still in that red light frequency. Levothyroxine was suspended 30 days after the LLT. They had improved echogenicity. That means less thyroid inflammation and bogginess. Autoimmunity was assessed, and these findings suggest that it was effective at improving thyroid function, promoted reduced TPO antibodies, and increased thyroid echogenicity, meaning you could see through it better, less bogginess. So pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? It's nice to have interventions that you can you can do and add in. So out of the gate with this, there's different frequencies that you can plug in that'll be specific to the thyroid that'll pulse the light at a better frequency. But for this, we can just come in here and we can just choose a general cycle all frequency. We're gonna choose a red light frequency out of the gate. And again, you gotta be careful. These can blind you. This is a powerful laser. So typically you can wear glasses if you're uncertain, but I'm just bringing it right up to the thyroid like this. And I know my... My Adam's apples right here, so I'm gonna go just to the just to the left of it. Okay, and I'm gonna hold that for like just two minutes. All right, I'm gonna do that for two minutes, and then I'm gonna go to the other side for two minutes. And then I can switch from red light to infrared. Because the studies show 
red light right in the mid 600s and then they show 830 here on the infrared side so what about both right so I'll take you know five to, I'll take maybe eight minutes and do two minutes on each two minutes on red light right and left side of my thyroid maybe infrared right and left keep it really simple out of the gate and I'm gonna just hold it right there and that's gonna go in deep but now it's the, the milliwatts on this are powerful so keep it out of your eyes if you're uncertain of it put glasses on There's special glasses that you can put on that will neutralize the light and again, I am not recommending this. I'm just letting you know what the data says. The data says low-level laser therapy is powerful and can significantly help reduce thyroid inflammation antibodies. Some say antibodies, some don't, but there are studies that support it. And multiple studies show that the hormone um, levels that you need if you're already on thyroid hormone will go down. And so the biggest contraindication is you got to be careful you aren't giving too much thyroid hormone. Now, I have Hashimoto's. My goal is just to get the inflammation down a little bit more. Can I do more to calm down that immune system? This is getting into that tissue. It's stimulating the mitochondria to generate ATP. It's helping to reduce inflammation in that tissue as well. I'm going to switch sides here, so I'm going to get a little workout with you guys. So this is just the red light frequency. Obviously, you can go, I could go if I wanted and go back a little bit further and cover the whole thyroid. I could do that too. Now, again, it would be a little bit less intense, so maybe I would go longer like this. But because I want to get the most intensity, I'm going to put it right up against it. But you could do this too. You, know, you can see it's not going to go in my eyes. And I could just go back and forth like that or even just hover it like that. So this is a powerful laser for that, for that reason. And I have a red light panel on the, on the wall over there, a nice juve one that works really well too. Again, this is going to be LED is light emanating or light emanating diode. That's what an LED is. This is gonna be a laser, right? A little bit different on the definition, right? Light amplification, so it's more powerful and it's stimulated by emission of radiation. It's gonna be a lot more in sync, in phase, if you will. A lot more intense. The, it's like firing a sniper rifle versus the shotgun, right? Sniper rifle, a lot more specific, a lot more energy. And I can tell you, I've been using the infrared on my shoulder. I had a little bit of tendinitis issue. I would use my Theragun and I would use some devices, my sauna, but getting the infrared on there, infrared can really penetrate deep so on the red light side of the fed fence red light can go about the literature says about four millimeters deep there's some good youtube channels showing that you can even go to the skull but when you go to the skull maybe you get so you can see this is the infrared so a little bit less right a little bit less on the infrared so same thing so there's videos out there where they put red light through skull and it, it, maybe 10, 15% is there at the very end. You'll see most of the infrared and for infrared can go pretty darn deep. There's some studies showing three to four centimeters, red light four millimeters. So if it's going through your skin, it's going through the epidermis, dermis into the fat tissue, about that fat tissue layer is where it helps because that's where you know red light can also be used to emulsify fat as well. So pretty powerful. So the cool thing is you can increase your thyroid hormone levels and if you're someone that has a lot of antibodies and you're already doing a lot of things you're already trying to get your gluten out trying to fix the gut this could be another powerful modality to add into the mix right why not right phyto biomodulation i mean this has kind of been going on for the last 15 years people have been studying this it's, it's getting to be a really awesome palliative modality so yeah you get the inf now i'm switching sides here for you guys so people have been talking about this for the last 15 years so it's good to have good data maybe getting some of these lasers and renting them some out to, to patients just to, to be able to have an extra tool in our tool belt uh, but these are powerful i mean there's some that are going to be less you know you want to look at the milliwatts some will be at 25 20 50 milliwatts this one right now is promoting red light at 1000 and infrared at 1400 milliwatts and it's handy it only weighs five ounces so it's very portable but i've been using it on my shoulder and man it's been helping inflammation because i'm coaching my kids baseball team doing a lot of throwing behind the plate, catching, throwing, and just having this nonstop motion and aggravated a bicep tendonitis from previous years. And I'm just able to recover and do pretty well afterwards. I use my Theragun, which is over here. And then I'll do this usually, usually before or after. Come in with the laser first, get the inflammation down, do my Theragun and get the pliability up. And then I'm hitting it from you know, all angles, right? And again, right up against the skin's the better because you're going to get some reflection if it's on your clothes. So I'm doing my shoulder like this. You know, I'm going to do it right here. Or I'm going to lift up my guns here and get it right here. And you can pull back a little bit and have a little bit bigger of an arrow or a bullseye there. But ideally about 10 minutes on a really inflamed tissue. 
But with this, you know, because it's so concentrated and the thyroid's so small and it's not, you know, already super inflamed, about six to eight minutes will give you a good therapeutic window between the red and the infrared. All right, guys, hope you enjoy this video here. Just wanted to give you a little bit more data. I'll turn this off safely. Beep, beep, boop. Here we go. And that is off. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The video here today, just when you look at things, just know this is another tool in your tool belt. Do not jump to this if you've not fixed the gut, got your vitamin D and glutathione levels better and got your diet better. Get that done first. And then if you want to dive in, you know, these are going to be some of the better modalities here um, to help get to the next level. And again, just showed you a couple of studies. Go to PubMed, type in that 635 or 637 or type in that 830 or 805 nanometer frequency or just type in red light or just type in infrared in PubMed and you'll see all kinds of data. Put Hashimoto's in with it and you'll see all kinds of good benefits. So I just want you guys to be aware of it. This is another tool in your tool belt as a potential kind of next step to get your Hashimoto's and your thyroid autoimmunity under control. Again, contraindicated for many reasons. We already talked about why because your thyroid dose will potentially go down because you're taking too much now because your thyroid performs. So again, this is just my general kind of recommendation. Talk to your conventional and endocrinologist or functional medicine practitioner before you do anything. All right, guys, hope you enjoy. Take care. Have an awesome day. If you want to dive in deeper, you want more support, we'll put links down below where you can reach out to my staff and team so you can get more support um, on the Hashimoto thyroid and even the laser side to get to the next level. All right, guys, take care. Dr. J signing off. Peace.